What's up everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to start our first PvP game mode and that's going to be free for all. So over here I have an example project of what we're going to make. So let me show you what's in it and then we're just going to start making it. Um, so we can select our free for all game mode and then we have a few options we can set. So we can set the match duration, the respawn delay and the score limit. So let me lower the respawn delay for now and then we're going to have a look in game at the stuff that's in there. So we have different spawn points than the one we are using in the, uh, well it's not solo, but in the co-op game mode. And we also have different hit indicators. So we're actually using a directional damage indicator so we can see from where we are shot. Um, then we can obviously kill each other and we have a kill feed on the right side of the screen. And also a little kill mission message popping up uh, saying you killed or killed by. And then we can respawn and we have a scoreboard in game that's actually sorted. So the player with the highest score will be on top of the scoreboard. And we also have a match timer on top of the screen. So if uh, the time is over or one of the players reaches the score limit, then the game is over. So that's pretty much everything that we're going to make. Uh, if you enjoy the series, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to get your hands on the project file, you can become a member of the YouTube channel or you can leave a small donation on my Ko-fi page and you will get access to the premium channels in the Discord. And over there, you can find the project files for this project as well. So with all of that stuff out of the way, let's dive into today's video and we're going to start setting up the lobby. So first of all, we need to add the game mode to our game mode enumeration. So if we go to the framework folder, we have the e game modes enumeration. We're going to open it up. So I have a second game mode in here, the test game mode. I'm simply going to replace that one with free for all and save and close it down. And then I also want to make a structure and a data table to define all the possible settings that we can use. So I have one easy central place where I can change all the settings if I want to. So first of all, I'm going to go to the blueprints folder and create a structure and I'm going to call this my structure game mode options. And let's open this one up. So uh, we're going to add three arrays in here. The first one is going to be the match duration. And we're going to make that an array of integers. And then we're going to add the score limit and the respawn delay as well. So we have score limit and that's an integer array. And the last one is the respawn delay. And that's also an integer array. So let's save and close this one down. And then we're going to create a data table that belongs to this. So right click, go to miscellaneous and then select data table. And over here we need to select our uh, game mode options structure. Click OK. So this is going to be our game mode options data table. And let's open it up. So we're going to set the options for the free for all game mode. So we're going to add one row and we're going to name the row the same as we named our game mode. So that's pretty important. So this is going to be free for all. And then for the match duration, I'm going to add uh, five array elements. So I have one duration zero and that means there's no time limit. And then I'm going to use uh, one minute so it's easy to test. And then three, five and ten minutes. So for the score limit, I'm going to use uh, four array elements and that's going to be zero. So there's no score limit. And then we have uh, five, ten and twenty. And for the respawn delay, again, I'm going to add four and the first one is going to be zero. So no respawn delay. And then we have three, five and ten seconds. So these are simply all of the options that are available. So let's save and close it down. And now we want to go into our lobby menu and start making some changes to the lobby widget. So first of all, let's dive into the widgets folder and we're going to take a look at our lobby menu. So let's tackle the designer first. That's always the most fun part. So uh, we're going to make a border over here where we're going to display the game mode options. And then we're going to add a little button over here to actually open the options. So let's do the border first. I'm going to drag in a new border and let me tackle the anchor first. So I'm going to 
anchor it to the center. And then for the settings, let me check my notes. So I'm going to set it to 20 by minus 175. And then for the size, I'm going to use 400 by 180. So alignment is going to be 0.5. And then I actually raised my game mode settings border a little bit. So this one is right below it. Now we want to rename this border and that's going to be the border game mode options. So GM options. And that needs to be a variable. I'm going to bump down the alpha a little bit and that should be good to go. Now on top of the border, first of all, we want to grab ourselves a vertical box. And on top of the vertical box, we're going to grab a horizontal box. And then inside of the horizontal box, we want to drop ourselves a border. And on top of the border, we're going to drop some text. So let's set up this part first. Um, let me see. So I want to grab this border and I'm going to set the padding to two. Then I'm going to make this border black. There we go. And we want to change the text over here. So let me make it the correct font and then I'm going to shrink it down to about 18. Uh, for the minimal desired width, I'm going to set it to 250 and then I want to change the actual text. So this is going to be the match duration. And that should pretty much be good to go. So now we're going to grab ourselves a second border and also drop it inside of the horizontal box. And on top of the second border, we're going to grab a combo box string. So the second one, not key, but string. And we're going to drop it on top of the border as well. So let's do the second border. We also want padding of two over here. And I'm going to make this black. There we go. Then we want to set this border to fill. And that will actually make the combo box fill as well. And we're going to rename the combo box. So this is going to be the setting for the match duration. And that's a variable. So that's good to go. Um, so this is the first border. Now we can grab this horizontal box over here and we can duplicate it. So the second one is going to be for the score limit. So let's make this the text score limit. And then we're going to change the actual variable name. So that's going to be setting score limit. And that's good to go as well. And we can grab the horizontal box again and duplicate it. And the last one is going to be for our respawn delay. And then let's make sure we actually change the variable name. So that's the setting respawn delay. And those are good to go. Now we need an accept button down here. So let me grab one of these buttons and I'm simply going to copy and paste it. So we're going to grab the vertical box and paste it inside of there. So that's our accept button. So let's make this button uh, game mode accept and change the text on the actual button. So let's make this accept. Then I'm going to set the justification to center and I want the actual button to center as well. So we should select center align over here and then the vertical alignment to the bottom and set it to fill. So there we go. Now we want to shrink the text down as well so let's make that 18 so everything matches up so we have our little border for the game mode options and then we're going to add a button over here so we can open and close it so let me grab uh, this border for example and i'm simply going to duplicate it then let's move it on top over here and i'm going to get rid of one of the buttons in there there we go so this is going to be our button game mode options. And then let's change the text on the actual button. So that's going to be the game mode options. There we go. 
So uh, we have pretty much everything good to go. We do want to make sure this border is hidden by default. So let's select the border GM options and we're going to set the default visibility to hidden. And then we should be good to go. Yeah, I think we got everything in here. So let's compile and save and we're going to dive into the graph. So inside of our event graph, the first thing we want to do is get rid of the game mode options button if we are a client, because clients don't have any use for the button. So we want to go to our event construct and all the way down the line, first of all we have a branch for a solo game and if we go further down the line we have a branch to check if we are the server. So if we are not the server, then we're going to remove the button game mode options. So at the end, we have a remove from parent where we have a few things plugged in already. So we can simply grab the button game mode options and plug it in over here as well. So then the clients will not see the actual button. So that's good to go. The next thing we want to do is create a function to update our game mode options. So let's create a new function and we're going to call this update game mode options. So first of all, we're going to give it one input and that's the game mode enumeration. So let's call this game mode and that's our game mode enum. Ooh like this uh, so let me grab my notes so first of all what we want to do is get our game instance so we are the server only the server can mess with the game mode options we know that much so uh, we can actually access our game instance and we have some useful information on there so first of all let's do that we're going to get our game instance and we want to cast it to our shooter game instance so over here, we want to reset our option string. So uh, drag off the game mode and we're going to set our option string and simply clear it. And then we want to get the data table with our game mode options. So we're going to get a table row name. And we're going to select our game mode options over here. So we want to plug in our game mode, but we cannot actually plug it in directly. So what we need to do is first of all, we want to convert it to a string. So enum to string, and then we want to convert the string to a name. And if you uh, do not do that, if you convert the enum to a name directly, then this will not work. It will do not. Okay, so it doesn't uh, translate to the correct enumeration if you do that. So you simply want to use the to string first and then to name. Otherwise, you're going to get problems. So we have that set up. Um, now, if we do not find a row inside of our data table with options, we're simply going to disable the button. So, for example, with our endless wave mode, we do not have options to set. So we do not have a use for the actual button. So we're going to grab our button game mode options. So that's the border over here, button game mode options. So if the row is not found, we're going to set enabled. And we're going to set enabled to false. And if it's true, then we're actually going to enable the button. So let's grab two of these and make sure we, we plug in the button in both of them. So. If the row is not found, the button is disabled. If the row is found, the button is enabled. Then we can grab the out row and break that over here. And we want to fill in our drop down menus with the correct options. So we're going to grab a for each loop. And first we're going to plug in the match duration. So we only need to plug it into the row found pin. And then we're going to grab our setting duration. So that's our combo box setting match duration. And over here, we're going to drag off and we're going to add an option. So we can use the loop body to plug that in. And then we can simply uh, get the array element and convert that into a string. So if we simply drag off the array element, plug it in, it will convert the integer to a string. And that's the options that we're using. Um, now, if this is done, we want to set the actual selected index 
otherwise it's going to select the zero index. So I'm going to set selected index. And then for this, I'm going to drag off the match duration array again, get the length and then subtract one of the length. So we have the highest possible option selected. There we go. And we want to do the same thing for the score limit and the respawn delay. So we can actually just copy all of this stuff and paste it twice. So from the completed pin, we're going to continue to the set selected index. And then after that, we're going to continue to the next for each loop. So over here, we want to plug in the score limit. And then we're going to grab our settings score limit um, combo box. So drag that on top of here. And make sure you plug in the length node to the correct score limit array again. Connect up the completed pin and connect it up to the next for each loop. And this one is going to be the respawn delay. So we can do the exact same thing. Plug in the array in both of these pins. And then we want to replace the combo box option with our setting respawn delay, just like this. Make sure we connect up the completed pin to the set selected index. And that should be pretty much good to go. Now what we do want to do is also grab our game instance and make sure that we pass on these variables. So we have an option, uh, sorry, we have a function on our game instance to create the option string that we're using to travel to the actual game. So we can drag off our game instance and we can call our make option string function. So let's connect this up to the last set selected index node. And then we're going to grab the setting duration. So match duration setting. And we can get the selected option from here. So not the selected index, but the selected option. And then over here, we want to multiply this with 60 because right now we're setting minutes and we want to know the actual seconds. So let's drag off the string and we're going to do two integer. And with an integer, we can multiply it. So let's multiply it with 60. And then we need to convert it back into a string. And that's the new setting of this option. So plug it into the new setting pin. There we go. And then we're going to name this option. So this is our match duration. And that's the first one. So let's copy this stuff without the actual multiplier. We don't need that one and we can connect it up a second time. So make sure we connect our game instance as well. Otherwise it's going to moan about it. Oh, my mouse is freaking out. Um, so over here we want the setting for the score limit. So let's drag in the setting score limit to replace the match duration. And we can plug it in directly and that should work. So for the new option name, that's going to be the score limit. And then we need one last one, and that's going to be for the respawn delay. So let's plug that in as well and make sure we connect up the game instance pin. So this is our respawn delay. Oh. There we go. And we want to replace the actual setting combo box. So that's the setting respawn delay and make sure we plug it in. So that should be good to go. Now with this function in place, we can go to our select game mode function. So let's open this one up. And over here at the end, we actually want to call our update game mode options. So every time we select a different game mode, we're going to make sure that all of the options are up to date. So right before the return node, let's drag in our update game mode options, plug it in over here. And then we can simply grab the enumeration over here and plug it in. And that's good to go. So that's just the enum from the input of the function. Um, okay, so we have that one in place as well. Then we want to go back into our event graph. And inside of the event graph, we're going to create the button, uh, sorry, the events for the game mode button. So let's go into our event graph and go to the button game mode options. 
So we want to uh, have an unclicked event for this one and also for the button game mode accept. So let's create both unclicked events right away. Um, so if we click this button, the actual window with the settings will open. So what we want to do is disable a whole bunch of other buttons so we cannot use those. So we're going to grab our uh, button for the character menu. We're going to grab our button for the game mode options. Um, let me see, so this one. Then we're also going to grab our game mode next and previous button. So next and previous. And then we have our loadout and main menu button. So button loadout, button main menu, button start game. Let's grab that one as well. And we also want our checkbox for the seamless travel. So that should be all of them. Now we're going to drag off one of them and set enabled. So we want to disable all of these buttons. So we can simply plug in all of them. There we go. And then we want to grab our border for the game mode options. So not the button, but the border. And we're going to set the visibility. And this is going to be visible. And that's good to go. So for the accept button, we want to grab all of this stuff again. And we want to re-enable those. So let's do that first. Let's copy and paste them over here. And we're going to enable them. Then we want to grab our border for the game mode options and hide it again. Hidden. And after that, we want to make sure that we pass on all of the options. So we actually, uh, if we open up this window and we do not change an option, for example. So if we only change our respawn delay, but not the match duration. Uh, we still need to make sure that we pass it on to the game mode, but we do not have an event because we didn't actually interact with it. So what we're going to do, if we click this accept button, we're going to pass on all the selected options to the game mode. So first of all, uh, what we could do is go into our update game mode options. And over here, we want to grab the cast and the remove option string. So the first three nodes over here. And we also want to grab the three nodes at the end. So let's grab those as well. And we're going to copy those and go back to the event graph and paste that stuff in here. So at the end of the accept on clicked, we want to go to our game instance. We're going to remove the current option string and then we're going to pass on the current selected options. So we can simply hook this up and make sure that we hook up the game instance to all of these nodes. And then that should work already. So that's good to go. Now let's dive into our game mode and create some functions in there. So we've created these new option strings and we want to make sure that we can retrieve them in our game instance or game mode actually. So let's go to our framework folder, open our shooter game mode. And in here we already have a function to set our game options. So let's open this one up and we want to actually Update it at the beginning over here. So we're going to grab the first nodes up to the enumeration setter and we're going to make a bunch of room over here. So we added the new free for all game mode to our enumeration. So we want to actually switch on that as well. So if we select the switch on string, we want to add our free for all game mode. So that's good to go. Then we can copy and paste our game mode setter, plug it in and set our game mode to free for all. And then we want to retrieve our new three options. So we want to create variables for those. So let's do that first. The first one is going to be the match duration and that's our integer. And then we have uh, two more integers. So the score limit and the respawn delay. There we go. 
So let's grab our match duration, plug it in, and then we're simply going to parse an option from our option string. So we can copy this and paste it over here. So we want to retrieve our match duration. And then simply plug it in and it will convert it to an integer and that should be good to go. So we're going to do the same thing for the score limit and the match uh, the respawn delay. So let's drag those in as well, connect everything up. And then we can simply copy and paste these nodes two times. And all we have to do is change the actual key. So the second one is going to be the score limit and plug it in. And the last one is our respawn delay. And plug that in as well. And then we want to hook this back up to our number of expected player setters. So everything will continue and the other options will be set as well. So we will only set these options if we actually have our free for all game mode selected. Okay, so that's good to go as well. Now let's have a look at our in-game HUD so we can add our match timer. So back to the widgets folder and let's open up our in-game HUD. So first of all, let's add it to the designer. So I'm simply going to drop in some text over here. And I'm going to anchor it to the top center of the screen. So let me double check, it's not really that important, but I've used position 0, 30 and then the size uh, 250 by 75. So for the alignment that's going to be 0.5, so it's actually centered. And then I scaled up the text to 42 and then used my own font. So that should kind of work. Now I'm just going to type in uh, something in here. It doesn't really matter. Oh. There we go. So I want to set the justification to centered so it doesn't jump around. And then we should be pretty much good to go if we rename this. So this is going to be our text match duration. And let's make sure that it's a variable. So with that good to go, we can go into our graph and we want to create a new function to update our match timer. So let's create a new function and I'm going to call that update match timer. So I'm going to give this one input and that's the time left in seconds. So time left seconds and that's an integer. And we want to convert that into minutes and seconds so what we're going to do we're going to drag off the time left and we're going to divide it through 60 so that will give us the actual amount of minutes that we have left then for this one i want to uh, make sure that i drag off here and get a two text node so that's two text integer and then if i open this up i want to set the minimal integral digits to two so if there's only one minute left, it's going to say zero, 01, for example. It just looks a little bit cleaner, I think. So that's what I'm going to use. And then for the seconds left, we can drag off the time left again and do modulo. So that's the percentage sign. And if we do modulo 60, then we will get the remaining seconds. So this will actually divide the time left through 60. And the remainder of that fracture is what comes out of this. So we can use that as the seconds left. Now again, I'm going to copy and paste this to text node, plug it in over here. So we want to grab our text match timer or match duration. And we want to set the text. And then I'm going to drag off here and I'm going to format the text. And we can simply say uh, open bracket a close bracket and then do the double dots. I'm not sure how it's called. And then open bracket b close bracket. And we have our two wildcards. So the first one is the minutes and the last one is for the seconds and plug it in. So that's our update match timer event or function. And then we want to go inside of our event graph and we want to create a function for when the match starts. So right now we have one for our 
endless wave mode uh, that's uh, this one so over here we count down and then we say wave one or wave two and things like that so since we're playing free for, free for all and not a wave game we want to say something different so i'm gonna create a new event for our pvp matches so let's right click and create a custom event and that's going to be a game mode pvp and then start match so what we want to do in here is grab our text countdown and we're not going to use it for a countdown but we're going to set the text and we're simply going to say uh, something like uh, go for example or match started or whatever you want to say at the beginning of the game so i'm just going to do go with an exclamation mark and then uh, we want to actually make it visible so let's drag off here again and set the visibility plug it in then we're going to wait for three seconds and we're going to hide it again so that's all we're going to do duration three seconds and then grab the visibility node and we're going to hide it and make sure we plug in the countdown text again so there we go this is our pvp start match function and that's all we need to do in here um so now we want to go into our player controller to create some replicated events for the server to call and we want to go into the game mode to make sure that everything works so there's one small thing i forgot so before we go into the player controller let's go back to the designer uh, we want to hide this text by default so if it's our endless wave game mode for example we don't need it so we're going to grab our text match duration and we're going to set the visibility to hidden and then we should be good to go so let's move this out of the way for now and go to the framework folder and we're going to grab our shooter player controller so in here we want to create two replicated events for the server to call when the game starts and the first one is to show the start game message so we're going to create a custom event and that's going to be something like a hut start match pvp so we can use this for our team that match for example as well so we're going to grab the event, make sure it's replicated to run on the owning client and I'm going to set it to reliable. Yeah, we could do that. It's not really that important. Um, then I'm going to grab my in-game HUD and I'm going to call my uh, game mode PVP start match function. So game mode PVP start match and that's all we want to do in here. So that simply the server can call this and replicate it to the owning client. And we want to do something similar for the match timer. So let's create a custom event. And we want to call this one a HUD a setup match timer. So again, make it replicate to run on the owning client. And I'm going to make this reliable as well. So this is only to set up the timer uh, at the beginning of the game. So it will actually show the timer and show the correct time left. So uh, what we want to do, uh, again, we're going to grab our in-game HUD and from there we're going to get our text match timer or match duration, I'm sorry. So for the text, first we want to set the visibility. So we're going to make it visible and then we're going to call our update match timer function. So drag off the HUD again and we're going to call the update match timer and we want to pass on the actual time left to the event over here so we have it as an input and we can make sure that the server can tell the clients what the time of the match is going to be okay so those two events are in place as well and now we want to go inside of our game mode so that's our shooter game mode and in here we want to create an event for uh, starting our free-for-all match so if we go to the event graph over here let me see where are we actually so over here at the end uh, for the uh, event handle starting new player so if this is our endless wave game mode we're going to start call our level start endless wave so we want a similar event to this but then for our free-for-all game mode 
So let's create a new custom event and I'm going to call that level start free for all. And uh, let me see. So we can actually copy some of the stuff from our level start endless wave. So we want to get our game state names update. That's good to go. Then we want to get a for each loop for all connected controllers. And we're also going to get a game start countdown. So we can grab all of those. And then let's grab our three second duration delay. And we can actually grab the enable input over here as well. So grab the second for each loop with enable input. And let's copy all of that stuff and paste it to our new function. One or more nodes were substituted during pasting. Okay, I'm not sure what actually got substituted. Oh, I accidentally copied the event. Okay, so that's no biggie. Um, so we have our level start free for all. We're going to update the game state names. Then we're going to show the game start countdown. That's three seconds. So that's why we have a three second delay over here. Then we're going to enable the input for all of the controllers and then after that we want to call our start match pvp so let's drag off the controller again and we're going to call our hut start match pvp so plug that in over here and then we want to go back to the first for each loop with the game start countdown and we're going to actually grab a branch over here connect it up and we want to check if we are actually using a match timer or not. So let's drag in our match duration and we're going to compare this. So if this is greater than zero, then we're actually using a match timer. So let's plug it into the condition. And if this is true, we want to call our setup match timer on the player controller. So we're going to grab the player controller from the for each loop and we're going to call our HUD setup match timer. Oh, freaking. There we go. Plug it in over here to the true pin, and then we can simply plug in the match duration for the time left in seconds. So this will make the actual timer show and show the correct time at the start of the game. And then we are good to go for this function as well. So we enable the input, we show the go message. So that should be good. Then we want to go back to our event handle starting new player and go all the way to the end. So over here we're spawning the players, we're checking which game mode we have selected. We have a switch on game modes and over here we want to call our level start free for all. So you could choose to do this for the solo game branch as well but it doesn't really make sense to have a free for all game mode in solo so I'm not gonna bother. So this should be good to go. Um, now there's only one thing left to do and that's set up our actual match timer. So let's make sure the timer actually works. So I'm going to use the game state for the match timer. So the server is going to set the match time on the game state and then the actual timer will be a wrap notify event. So then it will notify the clients to update the timer. So let's open up our shooter game state and in here we're going to create a new variable and that's our match time left in seconds so match time left seconds that's an integer and then we want to set this to replicate wrap notify and let's go to the event graph so what the freak is this yeah that's fine whatever I'm going to worry about that later. Um, let's create a new custom event and that's going to be update HUD match timer. So this doesn't need to replicate. All we're going to do in here is drag in our match time left in seconds, plug it in and make sure we pass on the variable. Now 
because we set this to wrap notify, it created the onwrap match time left in seconds. So we're going to open up this function and this function will be called every time the actual value of this variable changes. So then we can tell all of the clients to update the HUD, for example. So we're going to drag in our shooter player controller and let's turn it into a validated get. Plug it in over here. And from the player controller, we can get our in-game HUD widget. And then we can simply update the match timer. So let's call our update match timer event and plug in our variable. And that's good to go. So we can compile and save it. And now if we go back into the shooter game mode, we're going to set up the actual function that sets the timer. So uh, let me see if we go back to the end of the level start free for all. So we have the second for each loop. We have a completed pin over here. We're going to grab a branch and hook it up to the second for each loop. So again, we're going to check if we are actually using a match timer. So we're going to grab our match duration and make sure that it's greater than zero. And if that's true, then we're going to use a timer to actually set the match timer. So let's drag off the true pin and we're going to set a timer by function name. Set the timer by function name, select this one. So for the time, I'm going to set it to one second. So every second this function will execute and I'm going to set it to looping. Then for the return value, I'm going to drag off here and promote it to a variable. And that's my match timer handle. So we have it stored. And for the actual function name, uh, we can just type it in. So I'm going to uh, name it something like a match timer interval. And then I'm going to simply copy this name. And what we can do next is create a custom event. So right click, create a custom event. And if we use that exact same name, then this event will execute every second. So we're going to use this event to actually update the match timer. So we're going to grab our match duration and we're going to decrement the int, decrement it, plug it in. Then we're going to grab our shooter game state and drag it in as well. And we can update our HUD match time and plug in the actual variable and that's good to go. So we're not really going to bother with an end game at this point, but what we could do is grab a branch and check our current match time and compare it to zero. Plug it in. So if this is true, the match is over. So for now, uh, I'm just going to print. We're not going to actually do anything yet, but then at least we have the timer set up. So that's going to be a match ended. And let's make it red. There we go. So that should make the timer work. Um, what we could do if the time is zero is actually grab our match timer handle and clear the timer. So that will make sure if the time is up, the timer is cleared and invalidated. OK, so that should be pretty much everything. So let's have a look if this is working. So I have a game loaded. There's a client in the lobby as well. So let's see if we can at least select our options. So go to free for all. The game mode option button will become enabled. So I can open it up and I can set the different values. So I forgot to make this text white so it doesn't really show. But there are actually values in here. So you can see I can select three and five, for example. So that works. Now I'm going to set the match duration to one and we're going to go in game to see if our match timer is working. So we have the countdown and then it says go instead of wave one and our timer is updating as well for the server and the client. So that's good to go. Um, now let me pause the video until the time is nearly over so you can see the end of the timer is actually working as well. So we have a few seconds left and at zero it should print the match ended print and then the timer should stop. 
So that's actually working as well. So nothing really uh, that shocking, but at least it's working and we have the basics laid out. Uh, in the next video, we're going to set up the spawn points for our free for all mode. And then we're also going to make sure that we can actually damage other players. So then it's going to be a little bit more interesting. Uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back soon for more. Talk to you later, guys. Bye bye.